Elegant Eric Cal Soder. E, good morning to you, sir. Hey, good morning. Sorry, I was talking to uh, Mike's wife. We were talking about your struggles with changing the furnace filter. So sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, our, our our unit is up in the attic here, which know, has I very little gotta, access. You got to you got to shimmy completely over top of the unit just to get to your filter access. But I've got a way that we can correct that. We just got to get Penny Pincher to be able to spend a few dollars, and it'll make your job easier. So. <laughs> you, you see him down there. Why don't, you got to rig, uh, no. rig some kind of Hornby grant where that gets taken care of in perpetuity. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, right. my. Hey, uh, let's talk about the Senate's $600 million plan, Eric, which, among other things, addresses the marriage penalty and also deals with a state income tax cut and brings back rebates for personal property tax cuts and for small businesses, and large, I presume, as well, for rebates for uh, in, 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 per, uh, property and inventory and such uh, rebates, too. So let's get into that. Eric, and your reaction when you saw that plan released yesterday? Well, kudos to the Senate for finally getting us something back. So we at least know that it appears that that $600 million in tax cuts is the magic number that the Senate is willing to uh, to go with. So, hey, kudos to them. Now the real work begins. Now is the whole uh, part of negotiating. And uh, I just briefly looked over the bill last night. We're still reading. We're still digesting it. In fact, I am missing our Thursday morning breakfast. Uh, it's over at the governor governor's mansion where we sit down and talk about it. So uh, the speaker's over there. The finance chair's over there. Paul Espinosa's filling in for me this morning since I'm on the radio with you guys. Um, the only part of the bill that I find, once again, we're still seeing remnants of Amendment 2, and I believe that the voters clearly said, okay, we don't want Amendment number. We don't want Amendment Two with all the personal property taxes. So we're going to have to get them over that hurdle. If if they're only interested in a six hundred million dollar personal income tax cut, fine. Maybe that's the direction that we go. But at least they gave us something, so now we can uh, try to negotiate and see what we can get for the taxpayers. Joe, well, Eric, uh, good morning. By the way, uh, good morning, Joe. Uh, yeah, six hundred million uh, being the magic number from the Senate. That's half of what the House wanted to do, essentially, in terms of tax mm-hmm. cuts. And their their direction is, a, is much different than yours. You guys mm-hmm. wanted to do personal income taxes in a big way to make a splash. And here comes the Senate, like you said, dredging up Amendment 2 concerns again. So wh- how do you think this is going to be received? You're the majority leader in the House. Uh, what are your rank and file going to say to this when, once they start digesting the bill? I think what they're going to say is, hey, get us a deal first, and then let's discuss it. So uh, that's the that's the next step. Uh, I think we're going to still stay the course with personal income tax. We'll put triggers in for year two, three. We may even take it out a little further. Uh, I, I would be willing to uh, negotiate maybe inventory. Um, the funny thing is the, the $500 million for machinery and equipment, what they've done, they basically lowered the personal income tax cut down to 15%. Um, I thought from what I've heard from my Senate colleagues over the last four years is, hey, we need this big splash. So for four years, I was sending over smaller tax cuts, and they said, no, we need this big splash. Now, today or yesterday, they give us a marginal personal income tax cut of 15%. But uh, like I said, kudos to them. It's a start. We'll at least sit down and try to hammer out a deal. Uh, that's, this is the whole part of the sausage-making process. And uh, if we can get an agreement, then you're going to see some type of tax relief. What it looks like right now, I don't know the answer to that. So it's going to take some give and take on both sides, and we're going to have to wait and see. What is your sense of this rebate plan? Since Amendment 2 failed, uh, the yeah. only way to, to, to cut the, the property taxes is, is through a rebate system. Is that a workable system? Uh, knowing that uh, in our neighboring state of Virginia, they've had a similar system in, in place for some property taxes. They, the, the state government supposed to rebate back to the people and oftentimes those rebates aren't paid in in certain right, years right. because the budget doesn't allow for it and which is one of the criticisms we had here in west virginia about that plan do you think that's a workable plan i don't think so because i've said before time and time again um it's, it's not a very clean way of giving people their money back and then i want to put this into perspective this rebate program is going to involve a lot of paperwork 
uh, for uh, the citizens if they're participating in, in, you know, in trying to get this rebate. And then the funny thing is, if, if they're only getting six, seven hundred dollars back, they're going to spend that amount of money with their local accountant to go through to do their taxes. So their net gain is zero. Uh, it's it, like I said, it's going to help accountants because they're going to have to go through. You know, especially when you have these uh, S corporations and you have more than one owners and all this pass through uh, and different owners, you know, all this property has got to be distributed amongst all owners. It's going to be a nightmare when you have to do your taxes. You're going to end up paying more money to the accountants. And in the end, I don't think you're going to get as much money back as what you think. John. Does that make sense? Makes perfect sense. Eric, Jonathan Bodwell. Um mm-hmm. Are there any parts that are just completely a non-starter for the the house? I mean, do you guys really? I mean, you guys want obviously want a much larger personal tax cut. Has there been has it been discussed at all, or do you have any, a sense of you know how low on the personal tax cut the house would go in a deal? I think at this time, at this point, we'll take anything. Remember, back in the summer, uh, you know, I keep advocating. Let's, for the first time since 1986, let's reverse the direction. Let's start lowering the rates. We had a rate at 10 percent. If if they're comfortable with 15, 20, 25 percent, you know, that remains to be seen. But uh, if it's only a 15 percent personal income tax cut and that's all it is, I'm happy with that. L- at least we're moving the rates in the right direction, and that's down. That's what I want to get accomplished. And if we can find some agreement on some other of the rebate stuff, I don't think that we will, because like I said, it's not a very clean way of, of trying to give uh, money back to to the individuals. And uh, if you ask me, is that a non-starter? Probably. Uh, but I, I, you know, we haven't even brought this before the caucus. Everybody heard about it. They had their press conference yesterday. Um, but we'll we'll just have to wait and see. How how long is the bill? How much reading is it? It's twenty four, twenty five pages. Oh, that's and not most bad. of it is. <laughs> Yeah, most of it deals with all the personal property tax, and then the last two pages are your personal income tax. So they set the rates, uh, 3% is the current rate, the low rate. They set it to 2.78%, that's 7.5%. The top rate is 6.5% currently. Excuse me, they set it at 6.02%. Uh, at first glance, I, I, I'm thinking it's only a 7.5% uh, personal income tax cut. But they did mention uh, eliminating the marriage penalty. I haven't, I don't know that I found the complete reference in the bill, but I think I have. I'm not sure. I'm I'm waiting to to meet with counsel later on today uh, because of this one code section that they cited. If that does deal with a marriage penalty, then that would pick up the other 7.5%. But uh, first glance, I thought, okay, my assessment, they're only actually giving a 7.5% personal income tax, but yet they said they were going to give a 15%. But I just got to verify that the marriage penalty is in this bill. If it is, there's your other 7.5%. So, Eric, uh, I, and this may be an unfair question because it, you said you haven't read the bill fully, but uh, in the property tax rebate plan for businesses, the Senate proposal is that this applies to small businesses only, which is to address the governor's concern, right, I'm sure, right. about large out-of-state corporations benefiting. Okay, so does the bill define what a small business is? Do, oh, do, do you know I don't know that it, it just talks about eligible taxpayers. Uh, let's see here. I'll just briefly look through the through the. Yeah, and I'm sorry to have you do that. I, I I didn't have time this morning myself to look at to see how they define that. They it talk is, about manufacturing. They talk about uh, motor vehicles. They talk about public service companies. They talk about real property. They talk about tangible personal property to talk about railroads. I don't see an actual definition mm-hmm. at first glance as I'm going through. I, now, I had heard the rumor is that the Manufacturers Association is not happy with the bill because it, it excludes all C corporations, which is who yeah. they represent, which are the larger, larger. corporations. Yeah. But uh, once again, I'm still concerned that if you go through this convoluted mess of having a rebate, you're going to end up paying all the money to an accountant to figure it all out, and you're going to get a net gain of zero. So. If you do use an accountant, I recommend CPA Ken Apple, 304-263-1100. Uh, Eric, is there anything in there about raising the top limit, adjusting it for inflation? The last time it was uh, set at $60,000, 
Uh, I think that was 95, or give or take. And if you adjusted that for inflation, we looked this up one day when Ken was on, it would be like 128000 now would be the equivalent of 60000 then. No, they just took the income tax rates that we have and they lowered it accordingly 7.5% for single or married filing jointly. And then if, if, if the marriage penalty is in there, you would take an, an additional 7.5%. That's the 15% that they're offering. Uh, there's triggers. They're saying that uh, in order to get the next round of income tax cuts, that your sales tax would have to increase 5% more before a trigger would kick in. Um, but it doesn't say at what percentage. So there's still some deciphering questions that they're going to have to answer what their uh, intentions are. But right now, I, I just don't see it in the bill. So, And my thought, and I know you got to get going here, but my thought is from the Senate's perspective, they're not passing anything unless there's something in there about personal property tax rebate. And my guess is the House isn't going to approve anything that includes a sales tax increase based on when you and John and the governor were here in Martinsburg and you all three agreed that a sales tax increase was a non-starter? Yeah, what I'm trying to prevent as well, right now there's $2.6 billion worth of spending. You know, I'm trying to prevent Republicans from, from being at the feeding trough, okay? <laughs> so I think one of the approaches that I'm going to use is to put more money into the safety net uh, if we're going to go with a lower percentage in PIT, that's fine. Right now, the safety net is $700 million. I may try to throw in another $600 million into that safety net, bring it up to $1.3 billion, which is the amount exactly that's in the back of the general revenue surplus section. Um, you know, Just for your listeners, and I've said this time and time again, I ran because I believe that our state spending is out of control. Right now, what's in play is $2.6 billion. And uh, I'm trying to return that money back to you, the taxpayers. So I'm going to do everything I can to, to accomplish that, and we'll see if we can get it across the finish line. And correct me if I'm wrong, when you tried to reserve that money last year, the governor line-itemed it out of the budget, did he not? He did. I, I stuck in $265 million for future tax cuts. That was back when they were making the argument with uh, the ARPA rules and the clawback. Uh, this time we were able to convince the governor of a $700 million safety net. Hey, let's take more of this surplus, put it in a safety net, and uh, that way it would hedge if there are any future issues. I mean, think about this. If you had $1.3 billion a, uh, sitting in a safety net, you would have to have a drastic drop-off of revenue of at least $100 million a year. Uh, it would take, what, 13 years for it to expire. Surely some legislature could take some corrective action. I know the chairman of uh, on the Senate side has thrown out a lot of what-if, a lot of assumptions, future assumptions. But once again, the legislature will take some corrective action. We can always what-if, 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 what-if. You could do that till the cows come home. But it's dependent upon some legislature changing a course of action. If, if PEIA is too expensive, okay, and, and there needs to be reimbursement rates, some legislative action will have to be done or at some future point. If not, whose fault is it? It's the legislature. So I, I know there was concerns with him with all these what ifs, but uh, you can't legislate what ifs. If you set aside that money again this time, Eric, or do you have an assurance from the governor that he won't line item it out again? I don't. I don't. But I think the governor is eager to get uh, personal income tax cuts. And uh, he, time and time again, he, you know, he wants to put us on a path to have total elimination. So let's continue to build this safety net. There's no reason why we couldn't put two billion dollars in this safety net and say, OK, if anything go, goes awry, we have this safety net. Uh, we can then put triggers on. We could say, all right, it sounds like the Senate only wants to go $600 million. Let's do a one-year tax cut of 25%. That's roughly $625 million. And then year two, we could do 10%. Year three, we could do 10, 10%. We could just continue to do 10% with triggers on it. If they want to uh, subscribe to what they've put in uh, as far as seeing uh, sales tax uh, achieve greater than 5% before the trigger uh, initiates the next 10% cut, I'm fine with that. 
Or we could say, hey, let's see, uh, because a 10% cut equates to about $250 million worth of revenue. You could also make a trigger for every $250 million in revenue growth, then the trigger triggers the next 10% cut. I mean, we all know that there's going to be some type of dynamic growth that's going to happen from eliminating your personal income tax. So I don't think anything is lost in, in this conversation. Uh, it's, I think it's a negotiation that we just need to sit down and figure out which path forward and come to some agreement. There I am. Leader, householder. I, I like to call you that, by the way. Uh, thank you very much for your time this morning. Much appreciated. All right. See you guys. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you.